Hello and welcome to our homestead, welcome to our channel. We're gonna be doing two things in today's video. One is talking about how our EG4 6000 XPs have performed over this last year. And two, we are gonna be doing a full load test on two of them. Let's put these to the full test and see what they can handle. To give you a little bit of context about what we are testing, this is our modest home. It's about 1,800 square feet. We've got all modern appliances in our home except for our stove, which is propane. And we heat and cool our home with these mini split units. I've got one here in the main space, and then I've got a dual unit for two bedrooms on one side of the house and another unit for our master suite. This is a 12,000 BTU unit. The ones in the bedrooms are 9,000 each, but they go to a single 18,000 BTU unit outside. And then we have a 9,000 BTU unit in our master bedroom suite. And as you can see, all of them are turned off right now. In anticipation of doing this load test, we're gonna be ramping up the house slowly to see what these inverters can handle. Forgot to mention, we also have this small 5,000 BTU window unit here in the solar room. To give us a baseline to work from, right now we've got everything in the house off except for lights and phantom loads like chargers for electric toothbrushes and computers that are running so my girls can do their homeschool, stuff like that. The app that I use for monitoring my loads in the house is from Emporia Energy. I use the Emporia View and I've done a video on that in the past. If you want to check that out, click up here. But this monitors 16 different circuits in my main panel telling me what I'm using. And right now we are at about 500 watts. So that is our baseline for all the lights that I have on in all those phantom loads. Let's first start by turning on all of our mini split air conditioners and this window unit in here as well. But before I do that, you can see that this unit right here, which is the master unit, is pulling between four and 5% of its total capacity. The unit next to it is about the same. They are fairly well balanced in the house. So as soon as I turn on all these air conditioners, we'll see how much each one is drawing. You could hear the inverters ramp up a little bit. Now we've got the house completely cooling down with all of those mini splits and this window air conditioner. We are pushing about 40% of the capacity of this inverter and 43% on the other one. Let's see how much we're using on each leg of this inverter. For about 450 watts on that leg and 1.2 kilowatts on the other leg. On this one, we are about 1.3 kilowatts on one leg and about 500 watts on the other leg. Things are actually starting to ramp down a little bit. Our inverter over here is at 38% capacity and this one is down to 14%. And that's because the compressors on the mini splits has ramped back down and it's in that efficient cooling mode. Now let's head to the kitchen. Now we are gonna do this as a real world test. So real world, I would have all the air conditioning on, of course. And then if I needed some water for some coffee or tea or whatever it is, I'd put this on. I wouldn't be doing crazy things all at the same time and turning everything on in the house. But today I'm gonna turn on as many things as I normally would on a day where I'm just using everything in the home. This tea kettle is about 1300 watts. So we're gonna click that on. And then over here, we have an air fryer that doubles as a toaster. I'm gonna to kick that on and just hit start. That's about 1800 watts. This one's pushing 51% and this one about 40%. You can see on one leg, we are at about 1.5 kilowatts. And on the other leg, we are about 1.1 kilowatts. Then on this inverter, about 1.1 kilowatts on that leg and about one on the other one. Now I did forget to mention that we have two freezers. This one is an old freezer that's upright and is very inefficient. We also have another chest freezer and our refrigerator. So those are contributing and I can't really get the compressors to kick off on these. Those are contributing to some of that load. And of course, these are running the whole time on the test. So what's the next normal thing you would do during the day? Of course, laundry. So I'm actually going to kick on our washing machine here. 
which is going to start filling it with warm water, which is going to kick on our very old but still working water heater. With the washer, it's going to be a total of probably about 5,000 watts. Now, of course, you will have to excuse the noise because the fans on these just ramped up once that water heater kicked on. I didn't catch it on camera behind me, but each inverter ramped up to about 72% of its capacity, but it dropped back down now to about 45% each. So I'm trying to keep everything on at the same time, but that's actually quite difficult. I don't know when the compressors on the mini splits are gonna kick in, and the air fryer in the kitchen ramps up and ramps down in its heat control. So I'm gonna need something else that will help us do this test. So I'm doing laundry, I'm cooking a little bit, I'm cooling the house. What if I needed to build something? This is just a 13 amp skill saw. Let's see what it does. Running that skill saw pushed the capacity of this one up to about 77% and the other one is about 75%. There's one more thing in my home that might trip these and that is my electric dryer. Right now, they have ramped back down again to about 50%. Let's kick the dryer on and see what happens and see if it trips them. Dryer is on, we are about 120% and there they go. It could not handle all of that together. Now I do not have these set to automatically start back up again. And my reasoning for that is because I want to see if there's a problem and why these tripped off. Obviously today, we know it's because I had a huge load, but I wanna be able to troubleshoot without automatically restarting them. Let's shut them down, turn them back on, and get the house started back up. Let's ramp it back up and see what we get on the inverters. There we go. What I have running right now since we came back online is everything that I did before except for the dryer. So if I was just to go to one inverter, we'd actually be over our capacity on that inverter. So as you can see, friends, it's just about balancing your loads and understanding what you're using in your house. So would one inverter run our home if I'm doing everything that I was doing earlier? No. And it's just about doing the math, right? Having two inverters also couldn't power everything at the same time. But when you are on solar power, you really need to just understand what you're using and what the capacity of your inverters is. When I was hitting those 50% marks, I could have just used one inverter at almost full capacity. And for any small cabin, that is more than enough for anybody to ever need. But for this house, which is a medium-sized house, I would say, and with all modern appliances and doing all these things at the same time, having two inverters or even three is the proper way to go. But again, it's all about the math and how you use things in your home. I don't have a well pump that is connected to this system on my house, but well pumps can be somewhat unpredictable on when they kick on. Obviously, when you are using the water to fill the washing machine, your well pump's gonna kick on as well. So that's something you need to take into consideration. I have a separate system out at my barn that runs my well pump and a jet pump for my rainwater tanks and everything I need in the barn. If you haven't seen that video about that system, click up here. The beautiful thing about these modern components is that they are scalable. So if one won't work for your house, you can parallel two together. And if two won't work, you can parallel three if they are split phase inverters like the 6000 XP. If you have single phase inverters or 120 volt inverters, then you have to add them in pairs. That's why I really love the 6000 XP and its split phase capability. Now I want to talk about our one year review of the 6000 XP, which is modified by EG4, but made by Lux Power. Honestly, it's been perfect. I haven't had any trouble with it really at all. I had one slight issue with it at the beginning with communications with the batteries, but that was resolved very quickly. Other than that, zero issues. I don't have anything else to say about it because they just keep working. If I ever have a problem with them, I will make a video to let you know what the problem was, how it was resolved, and how quickly it was resolved by EG4. I really wanted to do this real world test of things that I would just normally do, and maybe every homeowner would just normally do. 
I think that gives a more clear picture of what these things are capable of. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Now go check out these videos right here, which are the original installation videos and wiring of the 6000 XP inverters. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time.